we're going to turn next to the subject of linear transformations. So let me recall in the setting of Rn, suppose we have Rn and uh, we have an n by m matrix. That is to say, uh, A is a map from Rn to Rm, and it has some very special properties which we've used over and over again. We've talked about them. We've mentioned linear transformations. Um, a is a linear transformation. And what does that mean? Well, uh, it means the following, that if you take um, a vector v in Rn and another vector w in Rn, and then you apply, you multiply and left by a, applied to v plus w is a v plus a w. We've used this over and over again, and similarly, if you have a scalar c, then uh, a applied to c times v is c times a v. So this is just a very basic, these are very basic properties of matrix multiplication. And they're really essential to all the calculations that we've been doing about Gaussian elimination and subspaces and so on and so forth. So the idea now is to look at the same notion in the setting of general vector spaces, not just Rn. And so um, there's a very uh, important definition which I, I will now give, and that's the following. Suppose you have um, a vector space V and another vector space W. And suppose you have a function or a mapping, whatever you want to call it, from V to W. So T is a map or a function from uh, V to W. Well, there are lots and lots of functions between these two vector spaces, but there's only a very special class of them which get to be called linear transformations. And the definition is the following. Uh, this function is said to be a linear transformation if it satisfies those two properties we saw in the previous slide. T of V plus W is TV plus TW. And this is for all V and W in V. And secondly, uh, T of CV is equal to C times T of V. And um, of course, for all V and for all scalars, C. And so this statement is just a translation of the previous statement. It makes sense in the setting of an abstract vector space. And it's just a copy of the corresponding um, facts about matrices. OK, well, so. Let's look at an example or two. Um, let's take a uh, really simple example. Take V and W to both be R1, the one-dimensional vector space. So that is to say uh, this T that I'm talking about, it's a map from R1 to R1. Well, that's really it's just R to R. And uh, so we're talking about a real valued function. And so it's typical, it's common to write that as f instead of t. So let me do that. So we're just talking about a function of a real single real, real variable x. And uh, you take the function c times x, where c is any scalar. That is a linear uh, transformation. And if you plot the graph of this function uh, in the xy plane, it's a straight line through the origin, a, a line of slope c. OK, so that's an example. And that's exactly the linear transformations from R to R. So anything else is not linear. So that means that is to say almost everything. There are lots and lots of functions. Very few of them are linear. For example, x squared, whose graph is a parabola, or uh, sine of x, or even this function, um, f of x is equal to 2x plus 1 isn't linear because it's a straight line, but it doesn't go through the origin. So we've seen all this before. I'm refreshing your memory. Um, and 
we want to um, just talk a little bit more in depth about um, what general linear transformations are now. So let me continue with a couple of, uh, again, a couple of basic examples. Let's take um, V to be V and W both to be R2. Then the linear transformation is of the form XY goes to AX plus BY, CX plus DY, which is to say this matrix ABCD applied to XY. And every linear transformation from R2 to itself is given by a 2 by 2 matrix like this. And in fact, we've discussed this. If V is Rn and W is Rm, then the linear transformations from Rn to Rm uh, are exactly the n by uh, the m by n matrices. So, in in the setting of ordinary Rn and Rm, we're not talking about anything new. We're just talking about the m by n matrices. Okay, well, here is in some sense the main point of today's lecture. Suppose you have two vector spaces, V and W. And suppose uh, V is n-dimensional and W is m-dimensional. Then the linear transformations uh, from V to W, uh, linear transformation T from V to W, the, they're exactly the same things as the m by n matrices. Just exactly what I said before. So what's different? There's a big but here, and the but is the following. Uh, this statement, uh, what I what I uh, just said, this identification with ma realizing these things as matrices, this depends on a choice of bases, uh, a basis of V and a basis of W. And that's basically what's new here is there's uh, there's these extra the extra issue of these bases of V and W coming into the picture and what we were talking about before for RN and RM is where you just use the standard basis for all the vector spaces in sight so I want to just the rest of the time I'm basically going to explain what this is about so Let's give the main definition of the lecture. Suppose you have a vector space V and a basis of it with um, n vectors V1 through Vn, and another vector space W and a basis of it, say W1 through Wm. OK. Now, suppose you had a linear transformation from V to W. Well, let's see. It's a map from V to W. So in particular, I could apply it to any of these basis vectors. I could look I could apply it to VI. So let's look at T applied to VI. Um, so this is an element of the vector space W, so you can express it in the basis of W. So that is to say T of VI is some linear combination of the W's. It's some A1 times W1 uh, plus dot 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 up to AM times WM. Now, well, I left a little space here so I can go and insert some I's to indicate that these numbers depend on VI. And uh, the shorthand for this is the summation running j from 1 to m of the aij wj. So that's the key formula. Let me uh, put it concisely here. Um, we have this linear transformation, and we can write t of vi is equal to summation aij wj, j running from 1 to m. And uh, this completely describes the linear transformation. And there are these aij's, and i is running from 1 to n, because I have the n basis vectors vi. So I notice I have these, these integers aij, 
and i is running from 1 to n, and j is running from 1 to m. Well, there you go. There's an, an m by n array of integers. There's your matrix. And that's exactly what uh, the definition says. Um, you have this, uh, you, you're given the AIJs by this, and then you say that the matrix of this linear transformation with respect to these two bases, it depends on the VIs and the WJs, so you say with respect to B and B prime is this matrix AIJ, and what that, that shorthand for is this matrix where you put A11, A12 down to A1M in the first column, and then the second column, and so on down to the nth column. This is an M by N matrix. And the definition says this is the matrix of the linear transformation with respect to the two bases B and B prime. All right, so let's do an example. So suppose uh, I did the following uh, thing. I suppose I take V and W to be R2, and I take the l linear transformation given by the matrix uh, 1, 1, 2, 3, and what I mean by this is this is the matrix uh, with respect to the usual basis. So this is what you're used to. You know exactly what this means. For example, if you apply this to 1, 0, you get 1, 2. And um, t applied to 0, 1 is, is 1, 3. And everything here is in the usual basis. But now, suppose I gave you a different basis of R2. Um, and I, a typical question would be, find the matrix of t with respect to a new basis, um, b. And I'll take b and b prime both to be the same. That's almost always what happens, which is uh, where you take let's say the basis 1, 1, and the basis 1, 2. This is a perfectly good basis of R2. And f if, for whatever strange reason, I like wanted to use it, I could ask you to write down the matrix of this linear transformation with respect to this basis. It's not going to be the same matrix. So let's see, what do you do? You write TV1. What is TV1? Well. The matrix, the original matrix is this, and when you apply it to 1, 1, you get, let's see, uh, you get 2, 5. And I need to write this as a linear combination of V1 and V2. That's what I'm asking. Uh, I need, in this new basis, that is to say, it's A11 times this vector plus A12 times this other vector. And I need to solve this for A11 and A12. I'm trying to find these which make this equal to 2, 5. Well, that's not so hard. Let's see. Uh, if you look at the first coordinate, you see that A11 plus A12 had better be equal to 2. And you also see that 5 had better be equal to A11 plus 2 A12. And that's a two-by-two two system. You solve it. Let's see, you, if you subtract the two equations, uh, you get that um, A12 is equal to 3. And from the first equation, you see that A11 is equal to minus 1. So the conclusion is that 2,5 is equal to minus V1 plus 3 times V2. OK? So that's the first. That's half of the calculation you need to do to answer this question. Uh, you also have to calculate T of V2. Well, by definition, T of V2 is this matrix calculation, multiplication, which gives you 3, 8. And you, again, you need to write this as a linear combination of uh, the basis vectors 1, 1 and 1, 2. And I'll leave it to you to check that uh, what you get is minus 2 times 1, 1 plus 5 times 1, 2. OK? So here, I, uh, on, on this screen, I have the calculation that I need. I've written T of V1 as a linear combination of V1 and V2, and similarly V2. 
So the matrix with respect to this new basis is you you go back up on your page and you look for the uh, appropriate numbers. There's these uh, guys here and these over here, and you see that the matrix is uh, minus 1, 3, that's A11 and A12, and minus 2, 5. Okay, so it's not the same matrix as we started with, um, and sometimes I'll write this as T square brackets BB prime, or even T square brackets B, to indicate it's with respect to B and B prime, and if B is equal to B prime, I'll just write B. So let me remind you, the matrix that we started with was the matrix 1, 1, 2, 3, and I encourage you to think about that as being the matrix of this T with respect to the standard basis. So I have two different bases here and two different matrices. Okay. Well, I think it's reasonable to ask, what's the point? I mean, we have a basis of Rn. What's, why bother? And that's a good question, and it brings up the, the, the key idea here, and it's the following. Um, suppose you had a, a map a T from Rn to Rm, and let me just say it for Rn. It, it holds equally well, but even in the case of Rn to Rn, uh, that's where I can say it, is, uh, and it's given by a matrix with respect to the standard basis. So that's what we were talking about before today. And now um, the, what happens is that sometimes uh, there might be a different basis of Rn which is better than the standard basis. And when I, when I say better, what I mean is that when you write down the matrix of this linear transformation uh, in the standard basis, um, if you instead write down it down in the, this new basis, sometimes this new matrix is simpler. That's the point that uh, um, it, it's sometimes better to choose a different basis because that makes your matrix come out simpler. And so let me illustrate that with a key example. This is really the basic uh, thing that we're going to be talking about in the next couple of chapters. So let's say I took this matrix. Um, so that's the it's a two by two matrix with respect to the standard basis. And suppose I chose a new basis to be this one, uh, one, one, and one, two. Let's do this calculation. Let's see what the matrix of this linear transformation is with respect to this different basis. Well, let's see. What is, um, uh, what is T applied to V1? Well, you do this calculation, you apply this to 1, 1, and what do you get? You get, uh, let's see, minus 1 plus 2 is 1, and minus 4 plus 5 is 1. You get 1, 1. Um, and you need to express that as, as a linear combination of 1, 1 and 1, 2. Well, it's 1 times v1 plus 0 times v2. That's a misprint. And what about t applied to v2? Uh, you do this calculation, and you get minus 1 plus four is three, and the second term is six, and you need to write this as a linear combination of V1 and V3, excuse me, V2, same as print, and let's see, well, this is just three times V2 and zero times V1. So that says that the matrix, with respect to this new basis, here are the numbers, is one, zero, zero, three. Lo and behold, it's diagonal. And that's the punchline. Um, this was a very nice basis to choose because now the this matrix is diagonal, and those are my favorite kinds of matrices.